All right, we'll start in five, four, three, two, one. What's up, guys? Ricardo Amadolia here, and welcome to another edition of the Ricardo Balea podcast. This is episode three. Uh, I can't believe I've, I've even gotten this far. And, uh, you know, just before we get started, guys, I just want to remind you, uh, if you could do me a huge favor, click the like, click, click the subscribe, share the video, and, uh, you know, you're definitely going to get a lot out of this because this is a man that, you know, we're going to be talking to a guy that inspires many. He's a guy that's done it all. He's been there, done that in the world of grappling, MMA. He's fought at the highest levels of everything. Mr. Tom DeBlas, how the hell are you? How are you, man? Third episode. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be uh, number three among the elite. <laughs> that's, that's it. I had Leo Vieira first, uh, Braulio second. And uh, it's been pretty cool. A lot of people have been, uh, you know, a lot of guys reached out and said, hey, you know, put me on. Or I reached out to some people that I'd never imagined they would say yeah, and they've said yeah. So you're one of the guys I had to talk to, you know. Um, that's, a, that's a pretty uh, amazing list to uh, to follow. And I'm going to tell your crowd, bear with me, guys. I'm holding my phone right now. So if you see it, like, wobbling around, I apologize. I'm trying to think, actually, of a way to to do this. Uh, actually, you know what I can put – Actually, you know what? I can sit down on the floor. Let's put this right here. And I can sit my ass. Oh, bear with me. Bear with me. Almost there. Almost there. This is harder than jujitsu, man. <laughs> there we go. I think we got it. I think oh. we got it. Oh. All right. Okay. We are good. Let me just adjust this. Just my face. That guy, yeah. Boom, we're good. We're good to go. Okay, so so let's let's get things started, Tom. Like you know, it's what is it, March twenty third today, two thousand twenty. Craziness, you know, around the world with the coronavirus. How is it like in your neck of the woods? Like, what's going on in Jersey, your neighborhood? I know you know you've had to you know uh, close the doors to the gym. Obviously, that's affecting you. Um, tell us what's going on. How's the coronavirus treating you right now? Man, it's 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 crazy, right? It's uh, I mean, people are still shopping and stuff, but you know, it's like a ghost town. Like, there's yeah. like all essential, like non-essential businesses are are closed. So it's like it's pretty wild. Like we've never before been forced not to work, right? Like if we yeah. failed, if we were to fail, it would be because like we didn't do good enough. Not because they told us we couldn't work. Yeah. So now it's like a lot of people, they uh, they don't know what to do because they've never been faced with a situation like this, including myself. You know, it, it very much feels like our freedom has been stripped of us, right? In, mm -hmm. in some ways, but I mean, ultimately, it's for the for the well being of, of of everybody. But it's still it, it's a hard thing to uh, to really wrap our head around. Uh, I just hope for the best. I heard yeah. tonight something that like uh, uh, they were saying, like Trump was saying, and uh, Kennedy. Kennedy's a senator, I believe. I might be wrong. I'm sorry. I don't know much about politics, mm -hmm. but apparently they were saying, uh, you know, if you think the coronavirus is going to be bad, like wait until our economy is totally crippled. You know, like yeah. the corona the coronavirus will be like the least of our worries. <laughs> like if our economy gets crippled and yeah. they were looking at the percentage and it's like, you know, at the highest, it's like 3% fatality rate. And that, that is among the older generation, which is terrible. We don't want yeah. anyone to die, but yeah. they have to, you have to ask yourself like for the country, what's going to be worse if we have people, you know, if we have fatalities or if we have people out of work, because ultimately that's going to cause a lot of fatalities as well. You know, there's yeah. going to be like crazy amounts of rioting and looting and, Man, I just don't know. I don't have an answer. If I have, if I had an answer, I would be God, but I'm not. You know, is it is it like where you are? Has there been any arrests, any looting, any you know anything? Anyone gone to that level yet? I know where I am. Uh, two guys got arrested at Costco for fighting over toilet paper. A guy pulled a gun out on a Loblaws over toilet paper in Toronto. So it, you know that's kind of the worst of what's happening over toilet yeah. paper. Yeah. Yeah. Do you crazy. imagine how, 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 you know, this is crazy. You know, yeah. I, I, uh, people are very, very weak minded, man. You yeah. know, and it's like, it's only been a week. Relax. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, 
this could potentially be – I don't think it's going to be like – I think after day 30, they have to really start letting people go to work, man, like a little yeah. bit. Like yeah. something's got to give. Like, they, like what are we going to do? You know yeah. what I mean? Like that's what's crazy. It's like – you know, and I know for myself, I mean, in town there hasn't been any like madness or anything yet. Uh, you know, I, I believe I know I'll always be okay. Like it's in, in my – in my field, but mm -hmm. I worry so much about the smaller schools, about yeah. people without a name, you know, uh, it's going to be tough. It's going to yep. be really tough. So you get the guys that are just making it by, you know, month to month, um, the gym owners, you know, that have had to ask their members maybe to, you know, to freeze their accounts or whatever, just to not collect dues for these next couple of months. If they don't have a forgiving landlord, if they're not in a good situation, it's, it's going to be really <laughs> tough for them. But you know, Kind of like jujitsu, as as humans, we gotta adapt to the scenario and you know play with the cards that were dealt, you know. And hopefully, some good's gonna come out of this. Like I, I was talking to Braulio about this, and I, I think at the end of the day, we can't change. You know, we can't change what's going on, but we could. The only thing we have control over is our attitudes towards this and you know, how how we treat others, and you know, the the, the elderly and the, the, even the homeless, like you know, stuff like that. Like it's just. That's all we could do at this point, you know, is just try to be better humans for survival, you know. But um, yeah, it's it's crazy, it's crazy. Um, you know, aside from that, man, you know, I, I don't want to take too much time in the corona. I want to talk to you a little bit more about, you know, uh, so your story, what you got going on. Obviously, you're not competing uh, that much. Kind of more focused on, you know, your gym and. Man, every time I see you, you know, you got seminars and new DVDs coming out. So, you know, tell us what, what's the latest on, on Tom the Blast before the Corona, you know, epidemic here. I mean, everything was going great, right? Uh, yeah. Had seminars planned for like a year in advance. Uh, many of them just got canceled. Uh, just finished up with the with the framing and guard recovery DVD, which will be released next month. I'm excited about that. You know, just giving back, building my association, giving back to the students. You know, I've hit a point in my life to where I don't want to say it's the final phase, but it's another chapter to where I uh, I, I want to just be at peace. I want calmness and peace, and, and I don't want, you know, violence or, you know, uh, there's a lot of guys, you know, that like, I, you know, there, there's a lot of ignorance in, in the world and a lot of people don't understand like uh, truly like when how serious some people are, you know what I mean? And, and I do understand that. And I don't want to be uh, a part of that culture anymore. Not that I necessarily was, mm -hmm. but uh, I definitely was always very, I, I would always speak like about like, I believe in violence and people deserve it. And now I'm just to a point to where it's like violence is always going to be like my last resort and i just want peace and happiness and i want to teach and make friends and you know i don't have anything uh, to prove to anyone but my own self you know i mean i mean i think the 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 battles that we have to overcome most are the battles with our with our own minds and, and i've always done a very good job about overcoming my own personal demons but yeah i still feel that uh you know for pure bliss and happiness like this virus has actually woke me up a little bit because I got to a point in my life financially to where I was always able to buy the new watch or new this or new that. And I, I would buy it and then I would look at it and then I would crave something more to where now it's like, man, like I'm just happy with the materials that I have. I'm thankful yeah. for what I have. I don't want anything else. I'm finding pure happiness and the things I already have. And, and I, and I'm yearning for moments that I used to have that I can't get at the current moment. You know, like mm -hmm. I can't drive to the mall and get a Starbucks coffee and sit down and just breathe. I can't do that right now. So yeah. these are moments that, that I'm looking to really uh, bask in and, and enjoy and, and, and really start uh, like, you know, I'm winding, I don't want to say I'm winding down, but as far as like a fire and grit, I always have that, but uh, I just, I, I I desire peace more than anything right now. That's that's really what I want. Nice, and you know I talked about a little bit how busy you are, and and when I see Tom the Blast, I mean you and I we know each other for a few years now. We've had a chance to hang out, chat, uh, work events, and stuff like that. But you're like a guy that has like four careers all within the same space. 
You yeah. Know, you're a pro fighter, instructor, uh, man, you're like a motivational guy. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you're, you're, and you, and now you're taking on like a promotion aspect. So tell me a little bit about like how, like one thing kind of led to another there, you know, like your journey, like from being a fighter and the differences it was, I mean, I see, I, I like I didn't know how big your schools were and how big your associations were until I came out to Jersey a few years back for the for the East Coast trials and man you got some loyal soldiers on your side you know what I mean I was I was I was blown away at the respect and the loyalty that those guys give you and it's a great thing to see you know so like I said you you really made the transition from you know guy that's been fighting in the UFC fighting in you know the biggest organizations fought in the biggest grappling organizations now you're coaching you have a huge team. And then, you know, like I said, online, some people don't even know you through jujitsu. They just know you as a motivational guy. And then, yeah. of course, now the promoter. So talk to me a little bit about that, how you kind of transition from one to another and what that's been like. You know, I, I think basically it's just been uh, resilience. You know, like when I first started training, like I was not the most talented guy, but I was certainly one of the toughest. And then uh, I focused a lot on my mind, always like – not just like being mentally strong, but like being educated and reading and, and, you know, broadening my, the knowledge that I already had. And, uh, I think some people, you know, they really put faith in me because they saw how hard I did work. And one thing about me, man, is like, I am a man of my word. Like I'll, I'll never, uh, I don't lie. Like if I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. And, uh, you know, I competed at my first ADCC trials in 2000, uh, I think, seven. I lost. And I competed in 2009. I won. 2014, I won. 2017 or 16, I won. And after I won my last one, uh, Marco, who is, uh, he's one of the, you know, he, he's a high up guy in ADCC. He said afterwards, we were all, every, like, all the ADCC refs were at Brazilian barbecue. And this was in ADCC Brazil. And I was there with my, team and there's a lot of fighters and athletes and he said he noticed that I was kind of like you know doing my own thing like I wasn't really concerned with what other people were doing like I was marching to my own beat and he could tell that I was a loyal guy so he's like hey you know could you help run the trials and I never ran a promotion before yeah. but I but I know me like I like I said I, I'm a college graduate I'm a smart guy I run a successful school so I was like man if these guys could do it I know I could do it and I could do yeah. better than them you know and like you said like my guys are very loyal. Like I have some ride or dies in my crew, yeah. bro. You know, yeah. uh, so I knew it was like, all right, if we have to do this, 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 people are gonna do it. They're not like. I think everybody knows that I'm not like the kind of guy to like, just like you're not gonna walk all over me. You know, you're not gonna take from me. You know, I'm gonna respect you if you respect me. So I know when I run an organization, no one's gonna come in and like try to be funny. Like. We're all there for one cause, and that's to, to put on the best event for the athletes. And I, I was an athlete. I mean, my second trials that I won, I ran. You know, so I, I was literally the promoter and competing. So I understood what it feels like to be an athlete. Yeah. While I was actually running it, so I, I know how stressful it could be. So I think people just, <clears throat> besides that, like heard me speak and they heard my word and and they could really relate to me because I don't, you know, a lot of people think I'm. Uh, I'm cocky or I'm arrogant, but I never claim to be humble. Like I really do love who I am for sure. I want other people to love themselves as well. And, you know, I, I, I don't hide that. I've, I, I've had uh, some really tough moments in my life and I've seen a lot. I've been through a lot. I'm a very old 38, you know, I'm going to be 38 in May and uh, man, I've seen a lot of shit, bro. You know? So I think people heard me speak and, not only did they hear me speak, but they saw that, like, yeah, like, we know, like, if, if Tom the Blast is going to lose in a grappling match, how am I going to lose, right? People, if you're not going to see me go in there and, like, tap real quick or, like, run away from somebody or be, like, a coward, you know? Like, if I lost, it's because the guy most likely stalled or, you know, he was just better than me that day. But I was, I was who I said I was, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that people saw, like, okay – he he kind of lives and dies by the sword. He says who he is is actually who he is. Uh, you know, there's been better guys, there's been worse guys, but you know, I'm a man of my word. And I think when we put everything together, when we talk about like competition, seminars, you know, I, you know, I, I don't think there's many people who 
who do it like me, you know? And I think as far as the seminars, they got really built up because people started believing in me. They knew my technique worked, obviously. The proof is there. And and they just, uh, the way I speak and articulate, people mm -hmm. can understand. And, and I was a school teacher, you know? I teach to every learning style. Kinesthetic, you know? Movement, auditory, like, uh, kinesthetic is movement, stupid. Uh, but literally everything like like i try to touch upon everything the different learning styles and, and i get through to a lot of people so i think uh when i do give seminars and stuff i put on a show and uh the word spread and every seminar i do every time i have the opportunity to do something i make sure like i show up like i perform you know like because that's like the first that could be the first and last time i ever really spend time with one person so i want them to have the best time possible uh and I think it, it was just a culmination of years of dedication, sacrifice, and hard work. And it's like we got to this point, and there's still more, a lot more to do. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, the one thing that I noticed with you is that people can relate to you and they feel like you're, you know, you're like they're one of, you're like one of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's some people in the jiu jitsu community where they teach their amazing technique or they're world champions, but. They're, you know, they're quiet. They reserve their, their social media posts. And you, you know, I'm not saying you have to do that, but you're a guy that's, you're posting actively. You're talking to people, you're communicating good or bad. You're, yeah. you're you know, you're with people, you know, and, and that's what people, they want to be connection. They want to feel that connection. And when they feel that connection, I think that they're more inclined to want to learn from you. So I know guys at my own gym, older guys, younger guys. They all tell me like, "Hey, we're doing half guard." Oh yeah, you gotta check out this Tom the Blast deck. Like, That's it's like awesome. cool. Yeah, and it's and it's great, and it's nice to see the diversity of how your messaging and how your relationship and how your persona is transcending in the jujitsu community. And I think that's a rare thing. And I think that that kind of plays into what you were saying about like why you you know kind of fell into that role or why the guys at ADCC trusted you because you can do that. You know, you're not a guy that just like. Hey, I'm teaching and I'm out of here. I'm looking at my phone. You know what I mean? Like you're a very personal yeah. guy in real life and online, you know? So I think that that's a, it's a rare, rare thing in our sport. And I think that that's why, you know, I, I think that contributes to your success. Um, talking a little bit about the trials specifically, uh, we touched on it real briefly. I mean, you, you've done a great job. Like uh, I helped a couple, you know, a couple of the East and West coast trials back in the day with, you know, our friend Emilio and, uh, Sean Fowler out in, in San Diego. And, um, you know, the trials was always like this weird thing where because I always felt like people were scared to do it. Yeah. But, yeah. but again, once you took it on on the East Coast, you doubled the numbers, then tripled yeah. it. And you've increased it because, you know, you have the familiarity and the community out in the East Coast. People know you. They know it's going to be, you know, like you said, you're a man of your word. So they know there's going to be no nonsense and it's going to be done right. So talk a little bit about the trials, not necessarily your history because you kind of touched on that, but like, you know, why why is it so important for guys out there to try and not be afraid? In my opinion, like a guy like Nicky Rod is the perfect example of any grappler that, you know, should be going to the trials. And I'll tell you one thing. I spent some time at Flow Headquarters and uh, in Flow uh, Sports in Austin and I know that there's wrestlers in the wrestling community. The guys at Flow Wrestling were telling me that they're like, there's guys in the wrestling community that are itching to do their trials now. So you got to be ready. And, and when you when you end up doing yours, you're going to have a lot of American wrestlers coming out. But let's talk a little bit about the trials and like even like Nikki Rod and, you know, a little bit about that story there. You know, oh, for sure. Like, I, you are right. You know what? You know, I think the people are scared to do them sometimes because if you get a big name, like we, we, we seen it in uh the trials in two thousand fifteen. Josh Hinger lost. Yeah. After he was a black belt world champion. And I don't even know who he lost to. I don't think he was a super famous guy. Uh but you know what? Like credit to Josh, he came back the next trials, won the trials, and yeah. then placed in ADCC. But a lot of guys they don't want to lose to a no name guy. Yeah. They don't want to lose to a Nicky Rod. Yeah. And you know what the thing is a lot of guys don't have like that jujitsu level to know that they can get by a tough wrestler, yeah. you know, like they, they, you have to be perfect, you know, like, and, and, and you know, we, we saw Tex Johnson in the trials, uh, in the, the last trials, he stopped, uh, it was a Wade Hudson 
the, the world-class wrestler, one of the most winningest wrestlers of all time. He ripped through everybody, Wade. Uh, he actually beat Nicky Rod that trials by like 15 points. Wow. Then Tech admitted him in 15 seconds, you know? Wow. There's like levels to this shit, you know? And it depends yeah. who you're getting, who you're going against. Like, you know, you'll get a lot of wrestlers to go in there and do very well because it, stylistically it depends who they're fighting, right? If they go, mm -hmm. if a wrestler goes against DJ Jackson, it is great as DJ Jackson is, right? His style for jujitsu is wrestling. Mm -hmm. Like, look at Orlando. Orlando got, you know, beat up pretty good by Nicky Rod. Yep. But Orlando, you know, he beat me on a decision because he, I couldn't take him down. But now if we took a high school All-American wrestler and put, like, I'm talking about, like, the best high school wrestler, yeah. heavyweight, heavyweight, uh, and we put them at the heaviest weight, stylistically, they're going to give some people some trouble. Yep. Right, but then if you put that same guy against Buchecha or Vinny, they're gonna they're gonna get destroyed like a small child. Yeah. So everything really depends on styles, right? Yeah. Like we saw stylistically what Nikki was able to do to Orlando, but then what Kanon did to Nikki. Yeah. Right. Like, uh, and Kanon and Nikki in ADCC were super close, but then they did the fight to one, and Kanon submitted him like super quick. Uh. You know, Orlando's never going to leg lock Nicky Rod, but Kanon was able to. But then we yeah. saw Nicky come back and, like, he was all over Vinny. You know, he was pushing the pace against Cyborg, like, turtling these guys. Yeah. And it's, like, stylistically, if we look at who did the best against Nicky Rod before he got tapped, it was Bruno Bastos. He did the best for three minutes because he was able to slow him down in the half court. These guys don't yeah. get it. I don't know what they're doing with their open guard. Or, like, I don't understand yeah. these guys. Why aren't you slowing this dude down? What are you yeah. doing? You know? You then, but Bruno, but yeah. then Bruno didn't have the leg lock knowledge that Vinny had mm. to stop the leg lock. So, really, it's stylistic. And, you know, these guys who want an invite, like, oh. you know, it's crazy. Like, winning the yeah. trials, man, is like you're winning the Olympic trials. Yeah. You're like, this is something that, like, it's a huge accomplishment. Like, one of the biggest in their life. For sure. Yeah. Like when Andre Galval talks about his accomplishments, he mentions he was a Brazilian ADCC trial champion. You mm -hmm. know, like the, it's never going to leave you. But I think yeah. the the fear of defeat for some people outweighs the possible thrill of victory. And uh, I think less and less we're seeing people aren't. I mean, I, I think this time people know they got to compete. Yeah. They got to do the trials, man. That's it. Like if you don't do the trials, there's a good chance you're not getting in. Yeah, I think it's for me. It's always the it's the saddest thing when I see people like messaging. It's usually every ADCC. It always ends up happening. They'll message me for some reason. I'm sure you get them. Oh, bro, nonstop. You know, all the ADCC refs. Hey, bro, do you know somebody? Can I get? Yeah, but I beat this guy in IBJGF with the gi, but it was by advantage, and it's like no one cares. You know, yeah. just go just do the up. files. Just go do if, and that's the thing. Like I was saying, like. Nicky Rod is a stud, Nicky Rod. But at that time, Blue Belt got silver medal in the biggest grappling tournament in the world. So that, you know, that how many years of training in jiu-jitsu do you have? Less than two years. Uh, wrestling for four years, if that. A top-level wrestler gets some good wrestling leg lock training in. He's got a great chance. And the rest, from what I understand, they don't make money in wrestling. You know, there's no real professional platform like but, you're in but you grappling, know what a lot right? of these wrestlers don't understand though what's that i'll tell you what they don't get is what nikki did in adcc was not wrestling it, it was a hybrid of wrestling yeah. extreme athleticism and extreme submission awareness yep when you touch nikki he's gone most wrestlers are not like Nikki, and that's a fact, right? Nikki Rod also, bro, he doesn't break. You're not breaking him. Yeah. In his mind, he always believes he can win. So I think there's going to be a lot of wrestlers that do it, and I think there's going to be a lot of wrestlers that are disappointed. Yeah, for sure. You know, If they think they're just going to come in and just pure wrestling, bro, yeah. what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Yeah. You're going to take someone down? Well, I got news for you. You got to put them on their ass for three seconds to score. Mm. So what are you going to do? Nicky Rod's back taking ability is second to none. Yeah. You know, where that's not a wrestling thing. That's Nicky. That's who he is. You know what I mean? So 
<laughs> I'm glad that he opened some eyes. Yeah. But if we take a look at who he is, a 240 pound, six foot three, ripped specimen freak that is probably the cockiest human to ever walk the face of the earth. <laughs> that's really a hard nut to crack. Yeah. You know, people got to understand that 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 shit is not easy to replicate. Exactly. And, you know, you, you said it, he comes off as cocky, but you got to be confident. And when you see that, I was watching that documentary, the ADCC, you know, I was out, I was out front commentating, so I didn't hear Nikki. I just saw him compete, but we saw that documentary that Flow Grappling put out and man, the confidence that he had just like, I'm the fucking best. I'm out, you know what I mean? Like just, he it, was, breaks it was everyone. Yeah. These guys don't want to compete against him. Yeah. They don't it's, want it's, to. Yeah. They think that he should respect him, and he doesn't, just mm -hmm. like Gordon. So yeah. that right there, like what he's doing is he's Muhammad Ali in people. So people could say what they want about martial arts and respect. And yeah. I, I say it too. I don't always like it. But martial arts is different than competitive martial arts. Yeah. Don't give yeah. me that shit about respect when you're beating your chest and screaming when you win. Yeah. Or yeah. – when you lose, mm -hmm. if you want respect, show it 100% of the time. Don't yeah. expect it if you're not giving it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, man, like, they want to talk about Nikki. Why aren't they talking about Orlando? You know? Why, why aren't they – when Orlando shows up with a shirt that says, stop making uh, whack grapplers famous? You know, like, and for me, I don't care. But, mm -hmm. hey, like, right there, is that not cocky? You know, is that not cocky? Or when Cyborg gave the fit. When Nikki beat him, and I know he got a lot of flack for that, but at the same mm -hmm. time, you can't really talk shit about Nikki if you're get, get making that scene when you lose. And I mm -hmm. love Cyborg, mm -hmm. but I was in the same situation in 2009 against Cyborg. They scored the match for 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 me a negative one when the when the match ended in Barcelona. They switched it and they gave Cyborg they gave me the negative, right? Mm -hmm. So they literally yeah. took that right out of my hands, and I walked off the mats. I didn't question it, you know. Yeah. Now, yeah. Back on Cyborg, giving him some props. The fact that he showed face after that, came back, uh, did what he did, and won some huge events and competitions. Like, what a warrior, man. Like, yeah. I, he, they put him through so much shit, uh, and he still shows up, and he still is among the elite, you know? Yeah. And he still, he gave Nicky Rod, you know, his toughest match that night. So it's like, yeah. I'm I'm just saying, like no one's perfect 100 percent of the time. Even me, you know, like yeah. especially me. Like I, I make tons of mistakes, and sometimes I contradict myself. And I think everybody has to understand that's a part of it. But if you want to talk about victories and money and competition, I mean, Muhammad Ali paved the way for us, right? That McGregor really showed what could happen when you actually back your mouth up. Gordon does the same thing, and now Nikki's kind of doing it too. So mm. don't get it twisted. You can't just talk unless you're winning. But these yeah. guys are winning. You know, so it's like, yeah. is it my style? No. But did I take second in ADCC? No. Maybe I should have mm. had some more, you know, fire the way he did and, and, and gave a little less respect. I know my technique is literally, I believe, as good as anyone in the world when it comes to a big guy playing guard. Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone – I don't know anyone who does it better. But at the moment, I didn't always do what I had to do, right? Yeah. And I guess everyone could say that. But I, I say to myself, if I had that attitude, maybe it could have took me further. But at the same time, I wouldn't trade it. Like, I'm happy where I am. You know, mm -hmm. I, I believe we all take a path in life. And the path that I'm looking – at and the and the vision that I see doesn't align with the mouth that these kids have, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So it's a catch twenty two. Yeah, you talk about the styles a little bit, and I, I wanted to touch on that because, like, you know, Gary under you, Gordon originally started with you, uh, Nicky Rod one of uh, under one of your guys. What's in the water in Jersey? What's going? Why is it that you got? What? Why is it that you guys are like? What is it about that crew? that kind of came from your branch, what did you do to give them that foundation to be, you know, to, to kind of evolve into who they were? What was it about their training or was it that they were just so unique individuals and grapplers? I mean, if you look at it though, it's pretty rare, right? Like me and Gary are both ADCC trial champions. Gordon is Gordon. And, you know, we all knew each other 
before we're anything. And, you know, I'm not comparing myself to Gordon and the, the things he's accomplished. But, you know, we were all among the elite in the entire world, right? Like, there's no denying that we were among the top 10 grapplers in the world for an extended period of time. That's factual. And now Nikki Ryan and now Nikki Rod. Uh, I think it goes all the way back, of course, to Hanzo, then Ricardo, and then my mindset and my outlook. Like, if you're on this team, you have no choice, right? Like, you have no choice. If you're going to be a competitor, you're one day going to be one of the best in the world. And the way we train is not for everybody, man. You know, uh, we're all, we grew up tough. We're, we're tough kids. We basically grew up like street kids. Like, I have some friends and I know some people that are as gritty as humans as you will ever meet, you know? And I think that's that East coast thing that we have. Like when you said, you know, you have some loyal students, bro, like, trust me, the worst thing that Dylan would have ever done at that ADCC when he got into Gordon and us was make a move because yeah. there's people, bro, you know, and there's people that are beyond jujitsu that you don't, you don't want to go down that road. I don't want to go down that road. I'm happy that they like me, you know? <laughs> and there's a mental toughness and fortitude I feel that we have uh, that we expect nothing less. Now, we look at technique, you know, Henzo is Henzo. Dan Ricardo, one of the most, you know, I think underrated grapplers in history, Ricardo yeah. Almeida. You know, we just got world-class technique handed to us and fed to us. And then Gary did. And then, you know, we have John doing what he's doing with these guys. Uh, you know, I feel John is like the fine tuner. You know, like he gets these guys that are like, uh, they have phenomenal talent. and But he just sees things a little differently. And he'll tweak certain things and just put the finishing touches just to, to polish the Ferrari. You yeah. know, but they're workhorses to begin with. Yeah, you, know, you can't make them. You can't make a rat a lion, you know. Uh, but you could. You could look at two lions. One is a zoo lion. He might look big and powerful, but then the most powerful lion, the strongest, most fierce lion that ever lived, they call him Mister T. He was small. He had a small. They call him Mister T because his mane. He was a small lion, but he was the grittiest toughest most murderous lion that ever he has over 200 lion kills credited to his name he was a ruthless ruthless leader anybody who came in his domain he would kill them and he would kill cubs and he would kill everything that was in his path now you could take a powerful looking lion that's in the zoo that looks stronger than mr t but you bring him in mr t's domain he's gonna he's gonna get shredded you know and mr t actually died the same way he lived most lions when they die, what happens is they, they die in exile. So there'll be leaders, and then two to three brothers will come, and they'll start fighting this lion, and this lion will run away, right? It's unheard of that a lion won't run away if they're being outnumbered. Mr. T fought until the death against three lion brothers. He got shredded, torn up, back broke. And in his eyes, you could still see he thought he, was, he would win. You know, I think... That's something that these kids have that that's I didn't necessarily have. Mm. You know, I think that that's what Gary and Gordon and Nicky Rod have that I didn't have. If you look at my career, I've never lost a fight or a match in my life that I was winning ever. I never won a match in my life that I was losing. Mm. That, that's crazy, right? Like, yeah. like it's and granted, when I say losing, how did I lose in grappling? You know, I, I was submitted two times. I was submitted once at Brown Belt in the Gi. Uh, and then I was submitted by James Papulo, Black Belt World. I took third already. I had a Bellator fight the next week. Bellator is ready to cut me because I was fighting the Nogi World. James went for a knee bar. And right away, I, da, da, da. you know, listen, I'm not saying it wasn't legit. I'm just saying, I, in my yeah. mind, I was like, let me, let me get the fuck out of here. Other than that, I was never submitted. Yeah. You know, I, I was never held down in side control. You know, contrary to our Orlando Sanchez's uh, 
post. Like he was going for like one month at a time, posting his flying guard pass over me. I would literally see it one month at a fucking time. Thank God Nicky Rod beat him, so I don't have to see that shit anymore. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he didn't hold me in side control. He didn't score points. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, I got out of that shit. So it's like I never ever been dominated, man. Ever. In my life, you know, and, and I could go as far to say I've never been dominated in training besides Gordon Ryan. And that is my God's honest truth. I've never had somebody in training since I've been a black belt in 2009 past my guard besides Gordon Ryan. Wow. Never, ever. Gordon will not only pass my guard, he'll pin my arms over my head and whisper sweet nothings into my ear. But I, you know, I have to remind him that I'll still hit him with a crowbar in the face if need be. <laughs> I remember before the, the ADCC 2017, we were in Finland, and I saw you down at the restaurant in the lobby, and we were chatting, and you were just looking at me. You're like, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, wait till you see what Gordon does. And, you know, at the time, he had won EBIs. He had won some other events, but he really hadn't hit that, you know. He hadn't done you ADCC know, yet. Let's you know what I knew? Go. I knew because I've, I've been there. You know, yeah. I competed with Belvao in 2009. He won on three points. You know, I, I know what – I like I said, I've never got my ass whooped. But then I would train with this kid, and he would pass my guard, take my back, you know, catch me. And I'm like, bro, like something – like I know you're not mentally dominating me. Like I'm super yeah. strong mentally. So you have to be that good. Yeah. So I'm like if that Gordon that goes against me in training can show up to competition, everybody's in trouble, bro. That's, and, that's, and bro. They that were. was what you said. That was what you said. You're like, they're all, they're all done. You don't under. And you were saying it to me. You're like, you don't understand. They're all there. You don't. Know. And I was like, yeah, I guess I don't. We'll see. And I, you know, like, <laughs> and I saw, and and I was, you know, I, I wanted to see, and I wanted to see how it would play out, and then I just couldn't believe it. You know, um, it's actually insane. Like, yeah. I mean, shout out to Shanji because Shanji. And Gordon were even that ADCC. That shit was legit. But yeah. literally, if you look at the people who this kid's beat, God damn, Homolo, Cyborg, Muhammad Ali, Tim Springs. Uh, who else? Like, literally yeah. everybody. Who's everybody. Buchecha, yeah. you know, uh, Tex Johnson. I mean, bro, it's it's literally insane. You yeah. know, it's like, and, and people don't get it. Like, people say, oh, Philippe, Philippe. Let me tell you something. Philippe is the man. He is a stud. He's unbelievable, <clears throat> bro. They 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 can't compete now and without the key. Like it, yeah. it, 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 you don't. People don't understand. Like if there's any foolish people out there that thinks that would be a close match, th trust me. Gordon was when when they last competed. Gordon was a total shitbag compared to who he is now. Like wow. Gordon in 2017 ADCC was nothing compared to what he is now. I mean. <sighs> You know, it, you know, you never know. Styles make fights, and yeah. you know. But I, I just don't think if you look at what they've been doing, you know, Felipe Leto doesn't compete too much without the gi anymore. He's kind of enjoying no. life, you know. Felipe is like in traveling and you know having fun, where Gordon's just like training every single day. So different yeah. times. It's just like me saying, hey, you know, like I'm gonna go compete in the next trials, but keep living the same way I'm living right now. Chance yeah. of winning gonna be very slim. I'd have to change everything. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think Felipe, you know, amazing, amazing. But I think it's like you said, you know, his 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 regiment, his consistency has sort of slowed down. Uh, I, I know he had a, a knee injury, so you know, hopefully we get to see that fight happen. I I'm you know I know tons of promoters are trying, but I know somebody priced themselves out of it. But we'll see what happens. You know what I mean? We won't. Like, we're not yeah. going to see it happen. <laughs> there, there, there's no way, you know, it's yeah. just not going to happen. Unless Philippe gets paid, I think, like 50000 something like that, something astronomical, he's not going to yeah. do it. But, you know, if we look at Philippe's fight with Andre, like, and Andre is the king of breaking people. Yeah. That was one of the most amazing, like, bro, I'm, I'm such a fan of him, you know, of Andre. It's just, like, what he does to people, man. Like, like I said, we competed in 2009. He beat me by three points. I'm happy we competed then and not now because – that dude is just like relentless, bro. You know, yeah. but it's like at the same time, that style, <clears throat> you don't want to be relentless against Gordon. You're going to put yourself in a bad spot. So yeah. what are you going to do? You know, we saw yeah. Buchecha was kind of like, couldn't really move too much because every time he went to move, he was kind of like, he had the, he had the backtrack. He had the regress, right? And Buchecha was 260 pounds, mm -hmm. you know, and just as athletic as Andre. So that's like, I don't know, man. I think, I think Andre should, 
if I I'm personally I never wants to see this fight next ADCC. Andre has nothing to prove. Andre's also a little older now. Andre has his daughter's growing older. He has a huge academy. He's got to focus on his students. Why would he compete? You know, I mean, mm -hmm. if Andre was 27 years old, 30 years old, you know, I would say go get it. But it's like, I just don't think it favors him now just because of the age and the the schedule. But at the same time, I know Andre is me even saying this right now. If he heard me saying this, he would like be annoyed. Like, and it's no disrespect to him. No, no. You know? But he would, he has a mentality. Like he would want to prove, he'd want to prove that person wrong. Like, how yeah. dare you say that about me? You know, and that's yeah. why Andre is Andre. Yeah. That's why he's the man, you know, yeah. but nothing but respect for him, bro. I like him a lot as a human being as well. Yeah, he's a great guy. And I was actually, I was there with him in Abu Dhabi when he retired. Like, he, he fought in this event and, he, he finished it and he was like, you know what? I, I just, I think I'm done. He's like, I, I think I just want to focus on my students, grow Bro, my academy. The fact that he said that yeah. tells me he shouldn't do it. Mm. That, that That's my personal opinion as a competitor. I well, remember he, when I knocked, I remember I knocked my last dude out when I went in Bellator and after I knocked him out, I remember his head like hit the canvas and I, and I was like, oh, like my initial reaction was like, oh shit, like, God damn, like, what did I just do? Did I kill this yeah. guy? And at that moment, I was like, who are you becoming? Because when I was a younger kid, bro, like, I would try to put a hole through your head. You know, yeah. now it's then I was like, I was getting soft. Yeah. You know, and the moment you question yourself, like, should I do it anymore? You got to understand, you're going against kids that are not questioning if they should do it. They they yeah. want to be there. They want it know? all. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and he, and it's not, it wasn't really a question. Like, he legit retired. And he says, my last one will be against Felipe, and that's it. And then, you know, it kind of went from there to, okay, maybe I'll do Gordon. <laughs> you know what I mean? But we'll see what happens. But I don't want to talk too much about, like, you know, I, I obviously Gordon is a huge name, but I also want to kind of, you know, you touched on a little earlier. Ricardo Almeida gave you a big base. And I think that, like, you know, in the history of ADCC, he was one of the first guys wrecking it. In ADCC, 98, 99, uh, 2000, 2001. Not only that, Ricardo made it in his prime. Can you give Andre Galvao the toughest fight of his life? Wow. Stylistically. Yeah. Ricardo yeah. was a phenomenal wrestler. Yeah. I've seen Ricardo take down world-class wrestlers. Ricardo made it in his prime, beats Philippe Pena, beats Cyborg, beats uh, – I think he beats Yuri because I think he was a better wrestler than Yuri. Yeah. Guys, everybody who I'm saying I think my teacher beats you, I have the utmost respect for you. I think you're phenomenal. I think you're great. This is not a shot at you. I'm just telling you what I think my teacher was capable of doing. And this is unbiased, you know, yeah. uh, for looking at his, his wrestling was world class. He yeah. had an even match with Arona. You yeah. can't tell me Arona wouldn't come in the ADC nowadays in the 218 division besides Gordon and literally rip through everybody. Mm -hmm. I'm asking you personally, who do you – I mean, you know, and you might disagree with me. I'll take your word. We'll debate it. But besides Gordon <laughs> at 218, who do you think would be Ricardo Arona in the last ADCC? I mean, bro, who's a kid? Tractor yeah. took second? Yeah, he didn't have the wrestling. That, you that tell Arona. me Tractor? Yeah. Come on. No, he couldn't. He couldn't. He couldn't. No. Yeah, Arona, especially Arona in his prime. You know what I mean? Like, especially prime Arona, it's, he, was, he was unstoppable. Never had a point scored on him. But – you know, we talk about Almeida, and I was watching some old tape the other day. Man, like I submitted Josh Barnett with a guillotine, our big guillotine. Bro. Something, and that's what I'm talking about. Like, you know, guys like Henzo, guys like Ricardo, who, who you know, innovated the Armin guillotine, you know, sort of revamped a technique that has been, you know, uh, count, so old, and they and they made it their own. And that was like the the just on the cusp of that shit, that was like the preview of what was to come of the team Henzo Gracie team. And obviously you're a part of that. So it's really cool to see, you know, the fruits of that labor, you know, that aggressive style. I always remember like, you know, as a competitor back, you know, years ago, I always remember hearing the Henzo guys and the half guys, two toughest teams, Henzo's guys, Bro. half guys. You don't want to fight those guys in tournaments. And half time you guys do, were known for being yeah. just tough. not the most technical, tough, tough. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and and it's true, bro. That's I, I came up like I was in the same room as high end half, 
Henzo, Carter, like sparring these guys, fighting these guys, you know? Yeah. I don't want to say we sparred. We fought, you know? It was yeah. wild, man. And it's yeah. like, no, you're right, bro. Like, like Ricardo Almeida, like what a legend, you know? And, and I, I think he definitely doesn't do social media as good as he could. Yeah. You know, he is, he's, he's way too humble, so to speak. He is a damn stud, bro. And he's one of the best literally to ever do it. And Ricardo made in his prime could be top three ADCC today. And that's a rarity. You know, I think the only guys we got like that, honestly, Ricardo Almeida, Arona, uh, Hodger, of course. Yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe Leo Vieira. You know, like Leo was like super studded his weight class, you know. Yeah. Uh, but even in his weight class, like if you look at the guys in his weight class now, it's like, I don't know, man. Everybody's yeah. so good. It's like, you know, but uh, it, it's a. Uh, it's a tough one to to say, but yeah, he 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 deserves more credit, man. He was phenomenal. He is phenomenal. Yeah, well, I got a question for you. Technically, now I asked. I've been asking this a lot of people, and I, and I I'm getting similar answers. I'm interested to hear what you have to say. But like, okay, obviously leg locks came out at the forefront in ADCC the last few years. Everyone's been going crazy on leg locks, whether it be for Australia, whether it be New York. Leg locks is, is it, it has to be part of your game now. You can no longer say that's bullshit and it doesn't work. It, we all know that, number one. But the last ADCC, we saw a huge improvement in wrestling, I feel. And not maybe not improvement, but a lot more of it and a lot more like in two, like compared to 2015. Nice, nicer wrestling, like easier nicer to wrestling. watch. Yeah, like 2015, you saw like some bad wrestling. And 2019 was totally different. Yeah. What do you think is going to be the, the, the trend that we're going to see or the position or what do you think is going to be coming in, in the next by the time we get to the next ADCC? I'm going to tell you this right now. If you want to beat Nicky Rod, you better learn half guard. Half guard is one of the most underrated positions that there is, right? Uh, what a Buchecha. Why? How did he live last ADCC? Half guard. Yeah. Right. He lived in the half guard and he did great. He wasn't himself. He was hurt coming in. Yeah. But I, I don't think it will be on the forefront. But I think we're just going to. So, what I think is, I think, uh, man, I think we're going to see a lot of jujitsu guys. I think the next jump in ADCC will be 2023. Because I think this ADCC is going to be a little rough. And I'm going to tell you why. Everyone's going to think they have to wrestle. People yeah. are going to start forgetting about their jujitsu. You know, and, and they're actually, by wrestling more, what they're going to do is give wrestlers a better chance. Mm. What I tell my guys is this. If you're going against a world-class wrestler, have better jiu-jitsu. If you're going against a world-class guard player, have better wrestling. You know, so don't go in against a Pat Downey and yeah. wrestle against Pat. No, no, man. Pull guard. You know, even if you give up the negative one, like, pull guard. Play guard. You know, or take a bad shot, recover guard, and then... And then win. So I, I think we're going to see a lot of people try to wrestle. I think we're going to see some other wrestlers maybe have a little bit of success, top four maybe. Uh, I, I I think we'll see. Uh, man, I think it's only a matter of time before we see some people from 10th Planet do something really, like, good. You know, we I think they had a, a stellar performance last ADCC. Uh, that they, they, they had some uh, – we have that girl who's super tough, uh, yeah, Elvira. Right. Yeah, yeah, and then we had that kid John Blank. He was phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, I think they they could be like top top six, you know, like make it uh, close to the podium. I think Nicky Rod is gonna be he's gonna be really hard to deal with, bro. Even for Buchecha, like, bro, he's big right now. Put it this way: I had a five thousand dollar bet with Gordon that Nicky could we could start with Nicky on my back five out of five times. Five out of five times, I would escape every time. And he could start on my half guard, and five out of five times, I would get to a leg. I no longer want that bet at all. I don't want to do it. The size of him right now is, is immense, bro. It's really hard to deal with. He's 255 pounds, bro. Just, just an animal, you know? So I think he's going to be a problem. Uh, I think we're going to see a lot of people try to emulate him, that jumpy, like, in-and-out type of guard, and they're going to fail because they're not yeah. him. You know, I think we're going to still see leg locks. Uh, I think Lachlan, 
uh, he, he basically gave everybody who didn't have a chance in their mind a chance, you know, by what he did with the big guys, which was just phenomenal. What a yep. stellar performance by him, man. Like, he just seemed like a really nice guy, too, you know. That's what, I, that's what I get from him. So, I mean, I don't know, man. I'm super excited to see. I hope this damn virus, hopefully, yeah. he doesn't get pushed back to. You know, I'm thinking, man, I might put up, like, if this isn't, like, up and running, if we're not moving in May, I'm going to uh, put a freeze on the trials, uh, on the registration. Uh, and then we'll see where we're at in, like, a month or two after that. But uh, I'm super sad about it. That's another thing I just thought about. Like, I'm super sad right now, man. People can't train. Like, yeah. a week without training. I've never went when I was, like, I've never in my life went a week without training until I was retired. Yeah. You know, like that. that is just, I don't know, man. It's crazy. Well, I mean, like, it's like we said earlier, we'll appreciate the time that we do get back on the mats that much Bro. more. We're going to appreciate so much more than what we were doing in our life before. Every little thing, every little trivial thing that we had is just going to be such a big thing for us now. We're going to value it so much. So I want to I want to shoot some, like, a couple questions here. i kind of been asking a lot of the guys real quick. Um, you can give me one-word answers. You can give me a couple sentences, but I want to kind of make it quick. Toughest role? Gordon. Okay. Toughest match? Huh. <sighs> Mark Tarman, 385 pounds in a ring. Oh, wow. I wow. won. Uh, toughest by far. Sweetest victory. And it could be a it could be a person or it could be an event. What was the most satisfying victory you had in your career? My first win in Bellator. Because it was after uh my last loss in the UFC. Mm. So it was really it, it was really uh I got my ass whooped the first round, and then I came back and I broke his orbital the second round. Wow. So it was a special victory, you know. Okay, outside of Nicky Rod, hottest prospect in your opinion, hot like the the kid that you like watching that cannot be part of your team though, cannot be a Henzo guy, cannot be a, a, a Tom DeBlas guy. Could it be a female? Yeah, for for sure. Jessica Khan. Mm. She's phenomenal, bro. Yeah, sweetest yeah. sweetest kid too. Such a good yeah. girl. You know, but she she is she is something special. Yeah. And that one that young boy, uh Cole. Cole Abate. Yeah. Yes. Oh, and the Rotolos. Yeah. How do we forget about them? Yeah. So, yeah. so much talent from the West Coast. And Nicky Ryan, of course. Yeah, and it's it's that's another thing, you know, we can kind of touch on that real quick, but like, man, the kids that are coming up now, it's oh, like damn. like you look at the Rotolo, sixteen years old. Fuck, you know, it, <laughs> you know yeah it's like we I, I i used to sometimes say like oh i wish i started at like 15 or 16 they're already have the career of black belt world champions essentially in the timeline yeah, and the techniques that they have they've already done everything and they're they're only purple belts you know or or it's it, it's crazy um best tournament rule set other than adcc Hmm. Uh, I don't think it exists. Uh, if I have to pick one, yeah. I mean, what what I got? So I would go for IBJJF with better refing. Uh, gotcha. And heel hooks. And heel hooks. Right? Yeah. And heel hooks. So, so I would go for IBJJF point system with heel hooks with better refing. It's funny because Bouchesh has said the same thing recently. It's really? like, I, and I don't, and, and you know, and you're an East Coast guy. You remember Grappler's Quest. Yeah, man, that's, of course. That's, that's essentially what Grappler's Quest rule set was. Yes. You could do heel hooks, and it was IBJJF with the gi. With no gi, it was, it was IBJJF points, but with heel hooks. Yes. Why nobody has figured out how to take it back to that system is beyond me because well, it makes so much thing, sense, man. you know. They have such a monopoly on things. Yeah. No matter what anyone says, you know, it, it's really scary, bro. It, it's, I love, I not, and I'm, I, I fall into that category because I encourage my students to compete for them, but then I complain about them. Yeah. You know, but I'm thankful for the, the titles that I've won under them. Yeah. You know, like I'm thankful to be a Pan American champion. I'm thankful to be a Nogi world champion, 
But at the same time, they piss me off so much because I feel that there's no repercussion for bad refing. Mm. You know, they literally do whatever they want, man. You know, and it's not just bias against Americans. Like, it's just bias against whoever they want bias against, you mm. know? And it's just like, bro, like, you, it's undeniable. Like, it's yeah. literally undeniable. Like, I, I'm just, I literally, the last Nogi World's like, the last, like, after that day is actually when I said, man, things got to change a little bit for me because I I went crazy. You know, uh, my guy didn't get his call. And I literally, it had to be like 15 minutes, bro. I was going hard to where when I was done, I was like, holy shit. Like, what did I just do? But everybody was happy that I did it. But I was like, I think they would have kicked someone else out if it wasn't me. Because I have a really strong social following, you know, mm. and it's like, it, it was bad. You know, should I have got that emotional? It's hard not to get emotional when you get screwed over. Well, not you personally, but like when your student gets totally screwed over, you know, mm. uh, would I handle it the same way? No, I wouldn't. But it's like, I don't know, man. It's disappointing sometimes. Yeah. But it's like you said, though, I, I think there's no real perfect rule set. A lot of it has to do with the fighters. I think you can invent the best rule set you want. And if two guys don't want to engage, they don't want to engage. Sometimes if they're, if, you know, if they're two of the best in the world, it could be one of the best, the most boring fights there is. So, 100%. You know, it, it doesn't, the, the best rules doesn't always equal the best fights. You know what they I mean? They just can't be like such little bitches about certain things like these little reaping like bro like relax like fall back like don't disqualify disqualify somebody in the semis because a weak ass reap you know yeah. or like people fly across the country they save everything man and it's like and you know then we can say oh when does it end when does it end like we feel out reaping what else we're gonna like i'm not saying like don't yeah. allow but just take the foot and move the foot yeah you know move the foot maybe after three times then give him a dq right but like relax yeah I, I my thing with that rules that rule of the reaping is is the culture that it creates. I'll give you an example. Like if if I'm rolling with my students or something, and yeah. um, and and uh, a kiss, a kid reaps on me, I'm not gonna I say shit. It. I get it, bro. I'm gonna fix his foot. I'm Other people are like, really stop. Yeah, but stop. the funny the funny part is, some people will say, "Hey, man, you can't reap." But then it's like, are you competing right now? Are you yeah. like, are you? Do you compete in the IBJJF World Champ? No, just you're like a hobbyist. Just chill out. But yeah, it's a culture. It's a result of of it becomes a culture change. You know where people are like they're so fearful. Meanwhile, when you and I started competing in like Naga and all this, oh. reaping. Are you talking? Are you kidding me? Can openers were legal slam. Yeah. Everything. People like. I remember I put up in Canada. There was a tournament where you could grab the hair. Of, a, of the guy, Are yeah. You serious? And a guy, and a guy wants a black belt in judo. He grabbed the guy's hair, grabbed his tricep because it was you could do you could wear gi or no gi and wrestling shoes. Grabbed his hair, grabbed his tricep, and judo threw him, <laughs> slammed him on his head. Another guy, and then even in the rules where you can choke with the belt. So it's like oh, I remember that, bro. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah so, people take all the belts. I yeah, mean, it's and I'm not saying hey, we need to go to that, but it's like. Come on, like the, you know, I, yeah. There's been a few injuries with the knee reap, but there's injuries with arm bars. There's injuries with kimuras. There's injuries with guillotine. There's people getting paralyzed with guillotines. You know, you know shooting on a what, double leg. I'm glad you spoke about this because I want to warn everybody who competes because I think this is a big shock for people who first do the trials. The physicality of ADCC, uh, you know it. You you've yeah. seen it. it. It is like a fight, bro. It's a like fight. you you are. ADCC is no IBJJF. You know, it is uh, like if we saw like Orlando's match and I, like we both slap each other, like if that was IBJJF, we would have been disqualified so soon. You know, like Nikki yeah. Rod would be disqualified in IBJJF all the time. Like the physicality, when people put hands on you in ADCC, it's like, bro, this shit's real. Yeah. You know, and that's one thing I've always, I've always loved about it. Like, cause I knew I could get away with certain shit. Like, bro, I would do like, I would do crazy stuff. Like, Cup, like air pipes and like you know just it's like you got to do what you got to do people might not agree with it but it's like hey do you want to win you want to represent your country you know you got to do everything within the rules mm -hmm. you know and uh yeah so guys competing in trials and girls get ready for the physicality because yeah. it is uh it's something different <laughs> yeah you know and it's funny because even to this day people are still like yeah they they let the match go off the mat and they do this and they do that and it's like 
Guys, remember, it's not called submission grappling ADCC. It's submission fighting. Yeah, it is man. A fight. It is a submission. It's the closest. We're gone. Fighting. You're the closest to MMA fight you're going to get at the highest level. Of, 100%. Of 100%. Brian, yeah, remember when I won the trials in 2009, the dude I was going against. Were you around then? Like, I know you were around, but were you at those trials? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I was going against this dude that was like 6'4", 250. He was like apparently judo sweeping my foot. He was like – he was literally like yeah. you know, and it's like – Bro, not at one time was I like, hey, ref, could you start? It's like, no, bro. Like, it is what it is. Let's get it. You know, yeah. like, but, yeah. Yeah. If he's giving you the leg, take it down. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of on you. It's kind of on, like, that. that's, that's, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, the pussification of the rules or the culture or anything. But, but in reality, it's like, what are we doing here? It is a sport, but it came from a martial art. It came from a fight. So you, if you're going to be there to complain about a dirty move, I understand. If it's actually hurting you and if it's illegal and you're like, you know, you have no way to get out, okay, I can see you looking at the ref saying, hey, man, heel hooks are illegal and he's breaking my leg right now, okay. But if it's a reap or something minuscule like that, it's kind of on you, man. It's a fight. It's a martial art. You got to defend yourself. You know what I mean? It, for me personally, as a competitor who I was, like, I would never complain for someone going too rough or, or I've been eye gouged. I, I like, People have been dirty with me, and I've never, like, only reason I looked up at the ref when Orlando and I were getting into it because I just felt like, I kind of looked at the ref like, hey, man, like, next is going to be punches. Just get ready. You know what I mean? Like, I know this isn't supposed to go this way, so it's kind of like, hey, bro, we're uh, at the water thing. Should we, do you want us to continue slapping each other, or do you want us to relax? Because it's going yeah. it's going to get crazy. But it's like, you know, other than that, it's like, man, whatever, man. Do what you do. Yeah. I hear you, brother. Well, listen, um, running out of time now. We talked about the trials. As if it if the coronavirus ends and we end up, you know, getting through this in the next few months, what's the trial date again? November eleventh. And remember, yeah. women, what I'm gonna do is the official trials for women is in the West Coast. The West Coast women, the, the, the trials, there's only eight spots for women. So understand yeah. this before you ask. And I'm gonna tell you why this is the way it is. There's eight spots for women, 16 spots for men. Therefore, there could only be one trials for the women because there's only eight spots, okay? They like to hold the trials the same year as the actual event as ADCC, which will be the second trials in the West Coast. I don't necessarily know their reason, uh, but that's just how it is, right? So what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to run a trials for the women. And the winner of each division, I'm going to, out of my pocket, pay their flight, their hotel, and I know Mo will probably just waive their entry fee, and they're going to be a top seed in the West Coast ADCC trial. So awesome. if you want to compete in the East Coast, you win. Your whole entire trip is on me, all right? Awesome. Uh, we're all pro women. You know, we love what you ladies are doing, and we want to keep seeing you grow and, and do great things. We need you, you know. Uh, otherwise, November 11th, uh, please don't start asking me, like, crazy questions yet. I know it's going to happen, but just – Follow ADCC North America on Instagram. Follow ADCC on Facebook and ADCC North America on Facebook. ADCC yeah. North America Facebook is not very active, but ADCC North America Instagram, the moment anything is happening, it's post. All right? So there hasn't been a post in like a week or two. We'll get another post up ASAP and, uh, you know, just stay up to date. And watch me. Like, I'll always keep you guys up to date with through my own, my own Instagram. And the, the website is adcctrials.net or what was it? Yes. Okay. Yeah, adcctrials.net. And, bro, shout out to you, man. Like, I got to tell you, like, I'm so impressed by the videos you do. Like, uh -huh. uh, no bullshit. Like, I think they're so educational. What you do, you're the only person who digs back and gives these athletes the respect that they deserve. So many of these kids nowadays, they don't they don't know the Aronas. They don't know about the Arona and, and Tito match. They don't know about these matches that were happening that you're pulling up and you're posting and you're analyzing. Yeah. Uh, anytime you have any of that, get that shit to me. I will immediately post it. Awesome. If, if, if I don't like your shit, it's because <laughs> I don't see it. Okay. I'm just, right. like I literally never – bro, you know what's crazy? I had an app. Uh, my Instagram, this is a funny story. My Instagram automatically, it deletes people, it deletes followers, right? So, like, I go to message uh, Mo, and I notice I'm not following Mo, and he's not following me. Mo runs ADCC. Yeah. So, I message him, like, bro, I'm like, 
why aren't we following each other? He's like, well, you won't follow me, so I don't follow you. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? I, like, I didn't follow you, bro. My app did this, you know? Ah, and it's funny because okay. he even said to Gordon, he was even like, bro, why did Tom stop following yeah. me? And Gordon just was like, what are you talking about? He didn't think about it. But it's so funny how shit like that happens. So, guys, like, listen, like, if I don't like your stuff or whatever, I, I truly, honest to God, don't see it. Yeah. Any issue I ever have with you, you know, if I ever had yeah. an issue with anybody, I'm going to say this shit. You I hear it from you. I hear it. If I, if you have something, you, I, I get the voice message. You're I get probably the like, oh, fucking Tom, here we yeah. go. <laughs> it's, either, it's either great news or a bad note that I'm going to get. <laughs> but either way, I, I love to hear it. And, and you know what? Like you said, talking about the legend stuff that I'm trying to do, that's kind of the focus of my podcast is I don't want to just go after like the guys that are competing. I really want to shine light to the guys like you know that paved the way like yourself like ricardo almeida like leo Vieira, like brawley all the guys that were like you know the the, the legends of the sport that you the, the first champions that's kind of the focus of my podcast is to educate you know the next generation and then my videos that i put out i want to kind of show these amazing matches that we had from the past so i appreciate the fact that you see it i, I really do man Bro, that's awesome. the fact that you put me you know in the same category as these guys like uh is a very humbling thing like like, I, I think, like I said, I think in some areas I definitely shine more than others. But when it comes to the things that they have uh, done, like, competitively, I mean, they're just uh, – those guys are in a league of their own, man. And, and I'm uh, – you know, it's funny, man. I It's crazy because I've trained with all these guys, and, and I've been on the mats with these guys. And, you know, I, I've always uh, – like I said, man, I've never been on the mats with somebody I didn't deserve to be on the mats with. You know, I was – it was always – Toe to toe, but even talking about Braulio, like, uh, man, some of the things that he's done. Like, I, I remember, too, I know we're running out of time. I just remember, just a fun fact, Braulio, they didn't put him in the absolute in 2009. Mm -hmm. He signed up for it. They didn't sign him up. Like, he went crazy. Oh, they wow. actually pulled, like, a no-name guy out of the absolute to put Braulio in because he wasn't in it, and then he ended up winning. You know, so wow, it's like yeah. – it's it's stories like that, guys. You know what I mean? That's the stuff that I love to hear. Like, even like the Leo Vieira, Mark Kerr story. Like, he was, he, he, I remember him telling me, he's like, man, when I fought Mark Kerr, I, they, they didn't even tell me who it was. They just said, oh, it's some American. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. And it's like this 270, 270 pound monster, pounds, yeah. you know, shredded. And I was like, man, that's crazy. Anyways, guys, listen, if you're watching at home, make sure you guys follow Tom the Blast on all the social media. He's always posting some. You know, techniques, uh, in, motivational stuff, inspirational stuff. He's the man. Go to adcctrials.net if you want to get your spot to compete at the you know the greatest submission grappling tournament, submission fighting competition and tournament in the world. Um, go to the trials, guys. Do the trials, like Tom said. Don't be hitting them up for invites because you're not going to get it. James Brasco, this means you. Yeah, you, you always do this Bro. every year. <laughs> we, won't go there. we won't go there. But guys, don't hit up, don't hit us up with the invites. Go do the trials, earn your shots, and uh, we'll see you guys there. Guys, Tom, this has been awesome. I, I, I mean, we could sit here for hours and talk. I had a lot of other stuff I wanted to, you know, get through, but I, I think it was good. I think we, you know, I like this kind of personal, just hearing you out and not sitting here like, you know, firing off you know, questions specifically. I just want to hear what you had to say. You yeah, know man. I, mean? I love it. This is one of the most enjoyable podcasts I've had. Because I uh, feel most that. podcasts I have are, it's like the same interview over yeah, and yeah. over. Bro, people know these things, right? So yeah, yeah. today was awesome, bro. I appreciate it. And it took my mind off this crazy virus. Yeah, yeah. We got to do it. So we got to do something. We got to do something. Guys, do sooner or later, we'll be back on the mats. Tom, I appreciate your time once again. Guys at home. Once again, follow Tom on all the social media. Give me a like. Give me a subscribe. Share this video if you're a Tom DeBlas fan. And I'll see you guys on next week's episode. Actually, it should be in about two days. I'll be launching another episode. So I'll see you guys then. Awesome. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you, man. Thank you.